Hey, Fountain City family. I hope you're having a great weekend. Thanks for joining together in Community Hubs. And if you're joining with us online, but you're not a part of our church family, or maybe you don't live in this community, thanks for watching with us. Um, our prayer always is that God is challenging your heart and he is transforming you through his word, through his spirit, and in community in everything that you say and do. Uh, a couple quick announcements before we move into a time in the word today. Um, first off, all of our midweek um, uh, groups have re-begun, so our men's group, there's a men's coffee that happens on Monday mornings from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock um, at the ministry house here on the church property. Uh, the address for that is 1514 12th Avenue. And so if you're a man in the area, you want to come grab coffee first thing on a Monday morning, talk about the scriptures, share a bit about your life, pray over one another, that's a morning to do that, uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. Women to get, get together on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. Um, and we can get you some information about the location for that. It moves between two locations week to week. And so we would love, ladies, if you would get invested in that and let other women pour into you and encourage you on a week to week basis, uh, but you can get involved there. Um, also, we always pray on Wednesday nights from 6.30 to 8. Um, and so through this time of fasting and prayer, we're doing 21 days of fasting and prayer. Uh, maybe you're late to the party, but you wanna step in. We wanna encourage you, go ahead and begin. Um, try fasting something. And fasting is simply a way to say no to your flesh in order to say yes to God and to increase your awareness of His Spirit and His voice in your life. Um, and I don't know about you, but like one of the quickest ways for me to recognize my flesh and my angstiness is to get hangry. You know, and to, to really be hungry, to deny my flesh its basic need. And so um, I just want to encourage you, uh, consecrate your year, set it apart through fasting and prayer. And one of the ways that our community is doing that is on Wednesday nights from 6 to 7.30 through the month of January, we're going to be joining with Take the City at Harvest House of Prayer as we join with communities from all over and we fast and we pray together. So from 6 to 7.30, Wednesday evenings, please come and pray with us. Uh, we'll have the link, or not the link, but the address below here. And uh, we appreciate you guys joining and what God's up to. Uh, last but not least, we want to encourage you, if you're a part of the FCC family, uh, please, would you just consider praying about giving generously uh, toward the church during the season of renovation. Um, in weeks to come, we're going to have a Vision Sunday where we will bring everybody into the space before it's um, able to be completed. And one of the reasons it's not able to be completed is that we don't have the funding to complete it without you partnering with us. And so one of the ways that we ask um, everybody to participate is to tithe. Uh, tithing is giving a 10% of your gross income. It's taking 10% of anything added to you. Um, and so we ask you to, to tithe on a regular basis. If you're a member of FCC, this is a part of uh, what it means to be a member or an owner of this culture is to give generously to the vision and the mission of the church so that we can do everything we need to do. But secondly, for some of you, you're wrestling with how do I give abundantly? Uh, and so maybe you're asking that question in this season. Uh, we are going to be talking about what we are hoping to raise over the next year in order to finish different parts of this phasing out of our building process as we really maximize the use of our facility, open it up to other outreach points and mission points in the city. Uh, and so stay tuned. We will have a Vision Sunday coming up at the end of the month of January, either the 24th or the 31st. We're just kind of waiting on our contractors to give us clarity about um, when we can come back in for that meeting. But we want to rally you and ask you, would you faithfully um, give and be generous in this season and consider how you can partner with us? Um, and maybe you're not a part of our church, but you believe in our mission. Uh, you believe in church planting. You even believe in us, like the, the, the team that's doing this, from Chrissy and I. Maybe we've sown into your life through the years. I just want to encourage you. Would, would you consider, would you pray about giving generously so that we can accomplish this work here. Um, and so that's all for our announcements. Man, I'm looking forward to getting involved with what God is doing in this space, this facility, and rallying our community back here. Uh, but we also want to be involved with your lives. And so whatever you've got going on, if you have needs, if there's ways that we can partner with you as a community, please reach out to us at info at fountaincity.org. Thanks. Hey guys, thanks for joining with us for Community Hubs this weekend. Uh, we just finished up our leaders retreat. We are out in Midland. It is nice and cold and brisk outside. Um, but I wanted to give you guys just a quick update about what we're doing today. Uh, with all the events that happened in our nation this week, um, our hearts were really heavy and felt like we wanted to communicate um, kind of where we were and what we were seeing. But in the midst of that, I always 
feel a, a steadiness, a call to pray and to really see God's face. And so what I do want to make clear from our perspective is that the events this week at the Capitol building um, were not in the way of Jesus. They're not in the character of God. Um, and we just wanted to say that our hearts are deeply broken and saddened by what we saw uh, from Confederate flags being flown in the Capitol building um, to rallies where there were calls and invitations, um, you know, to kind of like go to the Capitol, storm the Capitol. I, I think that it was a, a heartbreaking week for us. And I just want you to know from the body of Christ, for us as believers, that any way that resorts to hatred and anger and violence we believe is in opposition to the way of Jesus and what he offers um, as, as an invitation for us to always take up our crosses to follow him, to love our enemies, those that we might even be opposed to, diametrically opposed to politically or whatever, whatever across whatever boundary. And so I just want to encourage you, no matter where you stand in this issue, that the heart of God has always been to redeem mankind through the blood of Jesus. And for us, man, we are standing in prayer for all of those who have been deeply affected by the events from this past week. And uh, I personally am trying to take time to grow in how we can address all of the many issues that come in line with a situation like this. And so just know that our hearts are with you from our black and brown community who feel once again, uh, like there is an inequity in the way that our justice, justice system worked and we saw that played out. Um, to those who feel deeply disenfranchised um, and some who feel really deeply convicted about prophetic words that have been spoken. I think we are carrying a lot as a nation right now and even within the church. Uh, and we just want you to know that prayerfully we will step into that space when the time is right and when God has given us wisdom and how to do that in a way that's helpful. Um, this week, and we still feel like 2021 for us is devoted to grounding and founding our lives on the person and the work of Jesus. Um, that is going to be the work of the church and the work of our lives individually as long as we live. And so I want to invite you in as a community to step into that space with us today as we celebrate how Jesus does transform lives. Um, and I just want to thank you for taking time to watch. And I hope in your community hubs today, following the, the stories, the Jesus stories that you're going to see, that you will take some opportunities to share your own Jesus stories and just ask the question, when did you meet Jesus? You know, are you wrestling with what it means to follow Jesus? And what has he done in your life? And so I love you guys. I pray that you have an incredible week. Would you just join us today? Um, the Georgia District Assemblies of God has just agreed that as churches, and Fountain City Church is a part of the, uh, the Assemblies of God, we're agreeing that we would just pray for our nation, right? And we would pray for the heart of God to be revealed. We would repent and confess of any sin that may be exposed in our own hearts and lives during this season. And that we would all come humbly to the feet of Jesus once again and be reminded that he calls all of us to be redeemed through his cross and through his resurrection. We love you guys. I hope you have a great time today and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, we got Justin yeah. Gilpin here. Justin, yeah. thanks for joining us. Yeah. Yeah, this is Good a great here. opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. So today we're actually just talking about Jesus stories and, uh, and we wanted to take a minute and just ask a little bit about your Jesus story. Uh, so... If you don't mind, tell the good people, because we only know Justin Gilpin of 2020, yeah. um, but who was Justin before Jesus? Uh, so when I found God, I was probably about 17 years old. Yeah. Uh, came from a broken family, um, very nominal Christians, and then uh, I believed there was God. You know, I didn't believe in evolution, but I didn't believe he was a personal God. Right. And then... Uh, Eventually, my brother and I, we ended up doing drugs together and, mm. you know, just kind of fell into the bad crowd. Yeah. And how long did that, that was like all through your teenage years? Um, yeah, it started pretty young. I probably was about 14 years old when I started doing, using. And then uh, by the time I was 17, um, a lot of radical things happened. Yeah. Um, ended up leaving my dad in Dahlonega, moving with my mom and stepdad in Atlanta. And that didn't last but three months, and then I was kicked out of the house. And, wow. Um, ended up selling drugs to eat. Yeah, wow. It's was, it was pretty, pretty radical. Yeah. And so it's kind of that, I mean, you had years of this story of just kind of living your own way, uh, partying, using drugs. Is that fair? Yeah, um, maybe a good three or four years, yeah. something like that. And how did that change? Like, at what point did you have a, an encounter with Jesus or meet Jesus? So I was about... Uh, Six months into 
selling drugs, pretty much a hustler. I had somebody who would drive me around and we would sell drugs together. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually we got into a DUI accident and I thought, you know, it's over. You know, they put him in the back of the police car and I'm, I'm expecting to go next. Yeah. Uh, I had already been to jail one time for underage consumption and here I violated probation within a six month period of time and I'm like, okay, here, you know, go ahead and arrest me. I'm, I'm, I know I'm drunk. Yeah. And instead of the police taking me and putting me in the in jail, I overheard them talking uh, maybe 10 feet away. They said, what do we do with this guy? And I, I said, you know what? I live, I live a mile around the corner. Mm -hmm. And so he takes me home. And I'm really surprised by this, thinking, you know, this cop's not doing his job because I violated probation. For that reason alone, yeah. I should be going to jail. Yeah. And then the next day, I'm kicked out of that house because I was staying with uh, my driver's family, and they said I'm a bad influence, and which you know was true. Mm -hmm. And that's that's probably the the critical moment there, where wow. I really felt like my family had completely abandoned me. And at this point, my friends were abandoning me, and I, I'd call up a lot of my friends, even though I was living on the street. I never really lived on the street. Mm -hmm. I was a sofa surfer. I would yep. go from one sofa to the next, mm -hmm. and so I called up all my friends and. Um, nobody had a place for me to stay and I kept trying and nothing and so I ended up taking my backpack into the woods behind a grocery store and I was really depressed you know hungover from yeah. all the drinking and I said you know what I'm just gonna end my life I said my my family has completely abandoned me and here my friends have completely abandoned me mm -hmm. 17 years old just I'm clocking out and Oof. saying this is this is enough and um, in the woods before I ended up you know, slicing my wrist, I, I had this incredible fear over me, and I, the fear was so real. You know, I was afraid. I was afraid of dying and going to hell. Mm -hmm. And I said, "What if Jesus is real? What if what if this God is real?" Mm -hmm. And I got down on my knees in the woods and I cried out to God. I said, "God, if you're real, give me a place to stay, give me food to eat, and give me a job, and I'll serve you." Mm -hmm. And I'm just I'm just laying it out, crying. For five minutes, the moment I stand up, the moment I stand up, somebody yells my name, and I, I freaked out, you know. Oh my gosh. I, I grabbed my backpack, I ran to the edge of the woods to see who it was, and it was some friends taking me home. And I, I just wiped off the tears, and I got in the car, I didn't tell them what happened, but the next few days, we're trying to get a hold of drugs, and before I could call up one of my drug suppliers and fill up my backpack full of drugs to sell, you know, yeah. to hustle, yeah. and nobody had drugs. For three days, I just began to sober up and ended up calling my dad. I said, you know, I want to live a normal life. Yeah. And he said, okay, um, call me back in three more days. So I called him back. He said, I'm going to come pick you up under two conditions, no drugs, and you go to church. Hmm. And so this, this radical moment of, you know, I should have went to jail. And then I, I said a prayer in the woods, and it was answered. And, and then I had a, a place to stay. And then all the drugs that I used to be able to get were... Yeah just on lockdown, couldn't get a hold of Which anything. Which you don't hear, right? Yeah. People are usually running out of stashes. <laughs> no, that never happened. For six months as a drug pusher, that never happened to me. Wow. And even even the people who would smoke a lot of marijuana, they they said they too were out. But it was Jeez. just, it was God's timing. Yeah. Um, really protecting me from, from this style of just selling drugs and wasting my life. And, oh my gosh. And then... Um, Eventually, my dad, he ends up coming to pick me up, and I go back to Dahlonega. And the very next day, I go to look for a job, 9 a.m. I fill out this application, and while I'm filling it out, the manager's already decided in his mind he's going to hire me. Yeah. I hand him the, the piece of paper. He looks at it long enough. He says, you're hired, Justin. No background check, no drug test, no interview, Whoa. no anything. Yeah. And I showed up the next day for work. You know, they were desperate. And, right. and um, I told my dad about all this that happened and he um you know how i should have went to jail yeah about how um in the in the woods i said a prayer and it was answered and then then i just began to tell him how the whole world went dry drugs and then, and then i called you up and he gave me a place to stay and then you know the, the big number five was when he gave me a permanent place to stay and i got a job yeah and my dad starts laughing at me you know and i'm Dad, why are you laughing at me? You know, <laughs> I I shared my heart on my sleeve. You know, this isn't so easy. And yeah. And after this, um, he he tells me. He says, you know, he says one week before you called me up, he said God told me to split up with my fiance. He said had 
he been with her, I would have never been able to move in. Wow. And that was my my step into this living Christianity, this thing yeah. that's a relationship with God. It's not just some building with a steeple and you know some books to sing some hymns, but yeah. it's it's a relationship with God. Yeah. And and then I began to to see um, God do so much through that. You know, other people mm-hmm. were wondering and questioning, and and then the thing that I kept going back to is that if, if God could love me, God could love anyone. Mm. You know, uh, Apostle Paul before he was. Paul, he was Saul, he, he murdered thousands of Christians. And yeah. he says this, he says, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. Right, yeah. But for this very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example to all those who would believe. That's where we start throwing stuff and kicking walls through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And did that become real to you? Like all in that season? I mean, was that like a really condensed season where you just experienced God's grace and was it real compact like that or did it like trickle out over time? I think there was definitely a trickling. Um, In the next few years, things, you know, obviously I've I've talked about my leg, how God radically healed me after uh, I shattered my leg in 25 places and, and I was paralyzed. Doctor wasn't sure. You know, God just took care of everything. Yeah. The healing, the bills, everything. And, um, so wow. that was two years after I got saved, and then a couple more years after that, I'm just experiencing more and more of God, and, and more prayers being answered, and, and faith is just kindling. Yeah. You know, it's, to, it's, to now, you, you're you serving overseas. You're right. serving in different continents, working with uh, mm-hmm. people who haven't heard of Jesus, mm-hmm. or don't know Him to the same depth. Right. And, uh, and so that's a pretty radical transformation. God meets you where you're at, and takes you where He is now. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I, I see it all the time. God's really good. Even, yeah. Even last week, I saw this guy in Walmart. He, he's asking me for some money. He's willing to wash my my windows. I said, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him more than that. And I said, I don't need you to wash my windows. I had respect for him because he's trying to work. Yeah. And he said he's in pain. I said, okay. We we said this little. Or he told me about faith. He quoted me a, a verse about faith. I said, okay. And we prayed for him. He, God healed him. Yeah. He, amen. he had this problem in his hip. And God just radically healed him, and he starts yeah. stomping, jumping, skipping, hopping, <laughs> running down the, the Walmart parking lot. That's and he, awesome. he comes back, he's like, what is this witchcraft? And I'm like, dude, we just started, <laughs> we were just talking about faith, and you were going to me scriptures. And he, he just, he was confused. He's not experienced Christianity right. in this real manner. And, and I think I think that's a lot of the church today. We, we are asleep, we are slumbering. Yeah. But we need to wake up because it's time. Amen. Amen. Hey, I hope you guys have just heard how powerful this message is and uh, Justin's testimony. Justin, if you could leave them with like a one-sentence challenge or invitation, what would it be? Uh, James 4, 8, draw close to God and God will draw close to you. Flee from the enemy and the enemy will flee from you. Mic drop. Love you guys. Justin, thanks for sharing. Yeah, thank you guys. Awkward hug. Yeah. <laughs> It was awkward. (laughs) Thanks. Hey guys, thank you for taking time to watch with us today. We've got Ashley Mealy with us and we're just sharing some of our Jesus stories from our community. And um, so Ashley, thanks for joining us and telling a little bit about yourself. Yes. Are you nervous? No, I'm good. Oh, good. So tell us a little bit. uh, One of the questions I've been asking is who was Ashley before Jesus? Do you remember that time of your life and what you were like? Yes, yes. I would say it's a little hard to... Uh, find that exact distinct time. I did grow up in a small town. Most people there were Christians or at least had Christian morals and values. Mm -hmm. But um, I do distinctly remember the time of Ashley trying to figure out who Jesus was and Mm -hmm. what he looked like. Um, So that was a very good season and also a very troubling season. Yeah. How did that like manifest for you? Yeah. So for me... uh, it, it started in my teens and then worked its way definitely into my early 20s. And I think I come to the point where I realized that I couldn't rely on other people's faith any mm-hmm. longer. I couldn't re- rely on things that I had learned at church or what my pastor had said in the past. I was having to rely on what I actually believed. And I just remember coming to this really serious point with the Lord and crying out to him and saying, look, I either want to be all in or I just want to be all out. I either need to know this is real or this is not real. And um, 
God showed up for me in a very tangible and real way and totally wrecked my belief system and my thought processes and my heart yeah. all at the same time in, uh, you know, only the way that he can do. Right. Well, tell us about that. Like, how did the Lord show up and what did he do in your life? Yeah. So, um, at the time I was finishing college, um, I was a five-year student and, uh, I was really getting ready to embark on this next chapter of life. Yeah. Um, cause I was a double major and I had no idea what I was going to do next. And oh, I what, just, what'd you major in? Dance and psychology. Yeah. There you go. Um, two things that go really well together, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I was in this point of life where transition was getting ready to happen, but I had been severely depressed for a while. I'd been, um, being treated for that. And I got to this point where I was just like, I know that this isn't what God has that's best for me. Hmm. I can't seem to get out of this place though. And what do I do? I had a lot of circumstances in my life, um, with the guy that I was dating at the time, with um, my my family, my dad was really sick. Mm -hmm. uh, there was just a lot of circumstances that I needed the Lord to intervene in and I wouldn't quite give it all into him. You know, I wanted to find this middle ground. And so of where I could like have one foot in the things that I wanted to do. Right. And then one foot in like, yeah, God show up for me when I want you to show up, you know? Had a little Jesus to your life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, I just came to this point where I got desperate and I got on my on my face, literally, in my bedroom one night and was yeah. like, God, I, I need you to intervene in my life because I can't keep going on like this. I mm -hmm. was having um, sometimes some su suicidal ideations. I was mm -hmm. just very down and, and in despair. And he met me. He met me. It was the first time that I cried out to him really, truly. And I said, look, it's, it's like either I'm going to believe in you full. I'll give you my full self or yeah. I'm going to walk away because this isn't working out anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, he met me, my life changed. Um, there's a whole testimony and story that goes there as well that I could get into further, but that was a really true marking point in my life, for sure. Wow. Um, it's interesting, like for, for Christ followers especially, we develop like really close intimate relationships with Jesus and then we use words sometimes that are, feel disconnected for other people, right? Um, and so when he met you, what, what did that mean? What, what happened yeah. for you? Was that a feeling? Was that um, like a, just a sense of his presence? Was that him actually speaking something to your heart or like an impression? Yeah, I, I think it was all of the things. I really do. Yeah. I think that uh, I didn't know what to do. You know, I had kind of grown up in the church, but kind of not as well. And so I didn't have a lot of like um, practices that I, ha that I was, you know, knew that I should go read my Bible or do this or whatever. I just hadn't done any of that before. And so I really, that night sat down, um, read the word, just flipped open because I felt like I, I was actually having this experience where I felt like the Lord was saying to me in my heart, you know, open the Bible, read this. Yeah. So I did that. And whenever that happened, I just felt this filling of him. And when I say that, that I was filled or that he met me there, I just mm -hmm. mean that it felt like he encompassed every portion of my life. Like there was no part that was left untouched anymore. You yeah, know, that he yeah. had just, it was like I took a breath in and when you breathe in, you feel like air fully, you know, engulf the rest of your body. And that's yeah. what I felt too. Wow. I felt like he in, just invaded my mind, my heart, my emotions, my will, like everything was laid down for him in that moment. Wow. That's huge. And how yeah. old were you when that happened? Uh, about 23, 24. Yeah. Yeah. And so what was life like after that? I mean, you've had this dramatic encounter yes. with this Jesus that you've known in part for a long time. And now you've experienced like, uh, love, tangible love, yeah. grace. What happens? Well, I wanted to experience that feeling every second, every single moment, you know, every yeah. second of my <laughs> day and night from there on out. And so I struggle with some disappointment in that, you sure. know, like just trying to walk out a normal Christian life or just a normal life in general after that of like, why can't I live on the mountaintop the rest of my life, you know? Right. But as I was going um, and just living life, I would just be honest with God. Like, hey, you know, I'm feeling really great today or I'm feeling really bad today because, you, you know, you haven't showed up how I thought you would. And it just seemed like every time I'd be honest with him, he would come and answer my thoughts and my feelings in various ways. And I, I just become accustomed to looking for him in all things. So whether it be a word from a friend or whether it be like literally, you know, I remember getting a, um, 
uh, Dove chocolate one time and I opened it up and the wrapper said something like really inspirational to me at the moment that I just needed to hear. Yeah. And so I just started looking for him in all the small places and finding those points throughout my day and, and my night that I could just be filled in the, even in the littlest ways, the same way that I was that night on my yeah. bedroom floor. Yeah. So, um, coming through that season, I mean, you're like mid twenties now, mm -hmm. right? And you've got this this faith is kind of formed with knowledge, but then there's also this experience and intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, what did the Lord do? I mean, you're how old now? Uh, yeah, in my mid-20s. But now, oh, now currently, I'm, yes. Currently, I'm, in this moment. <laughs> I'm 36. <laughs> so we got 10 years yeah. of like walking in intimacy with Jesus. Mm -hmm. What would you say has been, like, what are those anchor points where it's like, man, the Lord has really done some things in me in the last 10 years out of that place of intimacy. Mm -hmm. What does that look like for you? Um, so I think for me, I felt like my experience was a little bit backwards. I had a lot of, uh, experience with the Lord first mm -hmm. and then it was like, he would come back and teach me things. So, um, it's kind of like Jesus's ministry. Yeah, exactly. So miracles like, and then I'll teach you what that's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've just noticed that pattern over and over for the last 10 plus years now where I experienced something with the Lord. I don't quite understand it or I might understand parts of it. And then it's like, um, sometimes it feels like detective work of like, where do I go and figure this out? Whether through Bible or through other teachings or commentaries and whatnot. Um, but then sometimes I just know like, mm -hmm. this is, Oh, yeah. this is what's happening. And this is why, you know, it's like God will give me a supernatural download. Right. So yeah, I think that that's been my journey so far. And, um, I mean, I definitely have points of, of weakness and that I still feel like, um, God highlights to me, but I've been really, especially the last couple of years, trying to go over those, like those points that he's saying, okay, you need to strengthen yourself in these areas and mm -hmm. go after that. I think it's really important to recognize our, maybe our weak points. Like for me, yeah. reading my Bible is not my first thing Yeah, having, but having a prayer time is yeah. so flip flopping that, you know, and going after, um, reading and really diving into the word mm -hmm. more so than sometimes prayer first. Mm -hmm. for me is important. Yeah, that's huge. Um, what if, you know, there's somebody kind of watching today and they find some places in your story that really resonate with them. What's an encouragement that you would give somebody who's maybe feeling like a uh, 21-year-old Ashley before this encounter, or before the experience with Jesus? What's What encouragement would you give to them? Yeah, well, I just want you to know that God is never... Um, I just want you to know that the Lord is always with you. God will never fail you. Mm -hmm. And that was really important for me to learn was just that God was going to fully be with me no matter what, no matter what circumstance I went through, even if I put myself through it, that he's always there. And that there is no, nothing that I can do that will separate me from his love. His love is unconditional. And that is something that has been really um something I've had to learn, you know, but that he loves you regardless of where you're at right now, regardless of where you're going to be or where you've been. So I just encourage you to keep, um, walking that, that hard road sometimes, but sometimes easy road of faith. And I encourage you to just, um, step out of maybe a place of complacency. That's where I was at least. <laughs> um, I was feeling complacent and, I needed somebody to come and shake me up and mm. um, and wake me up. And so I'm just thankful that the Lord came and he rescued me out of my complacency. That's huge. Thanks yeah. for sharing your testimony. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me. And share your Jesus story with people today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. See you. Bye. See Bye, you. Ashley.